Hey everyone, now we're going to go over the bug fixes that they've done for uh, Terminator XV3 and uh, some of the small updates that are actually proved to be pretty useful and uh, and nice um, that you know would would probably get overlooked if I didn't make this video or if you don't read the help file. So um, a few things that I'm just going to point out that I thought were, were pretty sweet. The first, if we go to basic IO, um, if you use the uh, basic I.O. for fans, for electric fans, which a lot of people do, you can now select that it will only run the fan when the engine is running. So that's pretty nice. Big fan of that. Uh, of course, you can still go back to your, you know, I.O. ICF, build a custom output and trigger your fans to run that way. But uh, for the people that don't really want to get into all that, this is, uh, this is available. Pretty slick. I like that. Um... They also added in PWM alternator control. So we can enable it and we can do a um, basic or a custom PWM. If you have a, if you know what you want uh, for your duty cycle uh, and frequency, you can do that or you can do basic. You can do a target voltage of 14.2 or whatever you want. So pretty sweet that it's already pre canned for you and it's in there. Um, I like that as well. There is also, let's go into. Uh, I'm trying to remember where this is. Can't remember where it is. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, mm -mm -mm. Should plan this out a little better, huh? It's in here. Ignition parameters. There it is. All right. So it's under ignition parameters under the system ICF. This here, global timing limits, right? So this is a minimum timing and this is a maximum timing. So even if you're not too great with math uh, you and you have a minimum and a maximum amount of timing that you'll ever run on this engine, um, no matter what your offsets, so if you've got timing retards, you've got uh, wheelie control, you've got traction control, you've got advanced tables, you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on with timing, um, you can set a minimum timing amount and a maximum timing value. So this is pretty sweet. Um, it's pre-canned at negative 15 and positive 60. Obviously, you modify that as you see fit. Um, but it's nice that there is a minimum and a maximum now. So like even if you are bad at math, you can still, uh, you know, not hopefully not blow stuff up. All right. Um, there is a few more things that they added. Let's look at the the, uh, the help file here. Um, oh, CAN bus. Let's look at that. So, if we go back into the basic I/O and go to CAN bus, um, CAN bus two. Okay. So, um, if you've got a Terminator X Max, you now can access the second CAN bus. So, if you wanted to communicate with a race pack. Um, or if you wanted to communicate with the new GM 6L80 control, you can. So, um, or if you want, you know, another Holly product on the CAN bus, you can. So say you have your dash hooked up to uh, CAN bus 1, um, and then in CAN bus 2, maybe you have uh, an EGT module or, uh, you know, whatever. So you have the ability to use both CAN buses now, which is nice. You do not have the ability to use the um, I.O., you know, to do whatever you want it to do. But you do get to use the, uh, get to use the CAN bus. So there's that. It's better than nothing, you know? All right, what else we got? Oh, this is, um, there we go, there we go. We already covered that. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 staging output. So let's go back into basic I.O., go to staging. So this is nice. If you use the pre-can staging output and you don't do uh, your bump or um, whatever through Holly the way I usually do it, um, this is kind of nice, right? So if you set this thing to duty cycle, you know, whatever, however you want this to set up, this is all the same, okay? This is new. So advanced enable, TPS is above or any parameter that they have for you. So you can activate and deactivate it above or below. There's a range, just like your custom outputs um, have always been. They give you an advanced enable now for staging, which is pretty sweet. So, fan of that. That one's a good one. Uh, let's go to this Word document. Uh, let's see. 
we already went over this. I've already gone over the uh, the closed loop and advanced parameters in another video. Just did uh, just went over the traction control stuff. We already went over the boost control stuff. Uh, GM 680 and 6090, they will be out and about here shortly. Uh, actually, they'll probably be out by the time this video is released, but, you know. Um, PC software will now offer to automatically download the ECU calibration before starting a firmware update, which is nice. Um, so it'll automatically download it so you can't lose it. Um, I, I like that for, for some people. Already made a video for y'all on pin map testing. Already made a video for you on the new dashboard or view all channels. Um, I like both of those. I like the view all channels. The testing, just be careful with, with uh, output testing. So like I stated in that other video, um, we've already gone over the data log and the monitor stuff um, in other videos. They've made some changes to VVT, uh, variable valve timing. Um, if you use VVT, this might be important to you. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, it doesn't matter to the majority of you. All right, so um, we already went over the advanced transmission updates. Um, there's, so there's an advanced screen for torque management, which is nice. And what I wanted to get to was, come on. Da, 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 da. Oh, they've also added a few new sensor types, which I went over this in the um, in the V6 uh, video I made, but we'll go over it here too. So if we go to inputs, outputs, and we enable this and we select a 5-volt, right, 5-volt center, go to configure. If you select in the 5-volt drop-down, we now have a Mad Racing Products laser ride height sensor, which is really nice. Uh, we use them on a lot of cars, and uh, they work really good. And then we also have the 12 position switch that I use on like a ton of stuff. Um, it is in, I've, I've made a video on how to set this up previously, but now you can just select a um, trim pot and it gives you the 12 positions, which is pretty sweet. It's already configured for you based off of voltage like that. And this one, you nitrous guys uh, probably are aware of the struggle with this. So this is their vacuum sensor um, in inches of mercury. Pretty nice. It's already pre-configured. Uh, you don't have to uh, struggle with it like you did in the past. So, um, we've already done this. Uh, let's see. Table, I've already covered this. And updated icons. So there we go, the bug fixes. Okay, so, there was a few uh, bugs that were going on in V2. Um, I experienced, let's see, I experienced this one. Uh, this the second pane reactivity not working on various screens. So if you go here into V3 and um, and you right click or if you click on this, yeah, we have uh, the second you know the split screen action right. So if we go up here and we right click, there's our timing table. If we left click over here, there's our fuel table. Um, we left click look at drive by wire and then we could right click and look at traction. Uh, some previously in V2 they had some bugs where there was no, it wouldn't react, it wouldn't do anything over here um, on the right pane. So I did experience that um, a handful of times. It wasn't every screen, but it was a few of them. Um, this one, uh, oh, this one is all another one that uh, I've read that a lot of people experienced. Um, and I've only ever had it happen one time, and it wasn't with my laptop, it was with a customer's laptop. But uh, fix an issue that would cause tables to turn white or flicker while online. They have fixed that, so that's done. Uh, hopefully y'all can rejoice about that one. I know a lot of y'all have talked about that being a problem. So sensor offsets were always being applied to the sensor ICF, even when not shown. We now always show the offset in sensor ICF when it is in use, which is always. Um, so previously, if we go to sensors, um, previously, let me close this. Previously, you didn't have this. Yeah, you, know, you could, you could offset it, but there's, that's now at a zero offset, right? So Previously, if they offset it at all in the factory config, it didn't show you, but now it does show you. So that's good, right? Um, this one was annoying. Uh, this happened. This happened on V6 a lot. Fix an issue offsetting access values by any amount greater than the difference between the adjacent cells. Doing so was causing a runaway condition that led to the access being blown out of the access maximum value. So what that means is if you were to go to, uh, let's see, there... Right. If you made actually, it's better with like a time. Where's boost? Let's do that. Tool add individual config. Boost. There we go. 
So let's go to the boost ICF, boost versus time. So what would happen is like if you made a change to, you know, one of these values, but it was greater than the difference between here to here or something, something along the, I don't remember exactly how it worked out, but what it would do is like occasionally it would make zero stay here, but then like this would be nine, 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 and it would reset your entire boost versus timetable. So they fixed that. That's good. Um, Firmware update, I don't think this one's really going to apply to many people, uh, but it fixed a bug when using individual spark timing with wasted spark ignition types. Uh, when using custom ignition with waste spark, it would use the higher of the two ICT values. Now it uses the lowest, like canned ignition type. So that's good. This one did, uh, I've read about this one affecting people. Again, haven't experienced it myself, but fixed a bug that would cause injector pulse width to go to nearly zero or to zero near a 100% duty cycle. So when your injectors were tapped out and damn near out of steam, um, once it would reach a 100% duty cycle, it would shut them off. So, uh, which is actually probably a good thing that it would shut them off, but they decided to change it. So um, drive-by wire to metal handle GT500 throttle bodies. This one right here. This one is going to... Everybody that should switch to V3 strictly because of this, because... Um, y'all leave your, your closed loop and learn percentages, uh, at like a thousand percent. So I'm exaggerating, but I'll show you what I mean. Um, if you leave your closed loop and learn percentages real high, right? Closed loop, learn, uh, 50%, 50%, um, and your O2 sensor dies, right? When your O2 sensor dies, um, it will read near max lean, Okay. So what that means is like it, it'll peg like lean, right? Like the O2 sensor is dead, it'll peg lean. And if you leave your closed loop and learn parameters really, or your compensation limits really high, it'll just pour 50% fuel to it here. And then eventually the learn is going to pick up and do pour 50% fuel to it. And it's, it's just going to add a boatload of fuel, destroy the tune up, right? Car won't run. So now what they did is um, if wideband reads near max lean uh, uh, for 0.25 seconds, so for a quarter of a second, it will now force open loop. So if it goes dead lean, it goes to open loop, and it doesn't destroy your, your tune-up. So that's good. Um, this one is also um, pretty nice. Uh, but I talked about this with the uh, transmission ICF that I covered. So... Uh, TPS rate of change calculation improved to better reject noise. This should make idle jitter less likely to cause AE events. AE events or acceleration enrichment. Um, people would see problems when they did like a not so great job of wiring their car um, or bad grounds or whatever, right? Um, they would see acceleration enrichment start to be added at idle when nobody touched the throttle. So the fix for that was to jack a whole bunch of like blanking value in this. Um, and it sometimes could get you like worked into a corner where the car didn't want to exactly rev the way you would want it. Now what they've done is uh, they fixed that. So now you don't need to run a huge blanking value um, and you would be good to go. So um, yeah, so it's cool that Holly has released all this stuff in V3, but it's also cool that a company as big as they are, will, every time they make a, a, a software or firmware update, they'll tell you what they fixed. So these are problems that they found or were aware of uh, or were made aware of uh, by end users, by y'all, and they said we need to figure out what is going on with this. So like even if, if one person, and this happens with me too, right? If one person said, hey, I don't know what's going on. Uh, my, my tables turn white or flicker while I'm online. Um, and I never experienced it and you never experienced it and everybody never experienced it. If it was just one person, we would all say there's something wrong with whatever you did, right? Which is the obvious answer. Um, if five people say it, or if you make it public that you saw this problem happen and 20 people chime in and say, yeah, it's happened to me once or twice. I don't know what it is. Now it causes an alarm. So it's cool that a big company like this is listening. They're paying attention. They're on the, uh, the social media sites and, they take note when customers call in um, with problems and they address them. So um, I think that this is a good thing. So there's lots of new cool features that are in V3. Uh, it has absolutely been rock solid for me. Uh, again, your, um, 
you know, everybody's results are always going to vary, but um, I have it's been absolutely rock solid for me. And we have had it on my employee's car for a while now. We've been beta testing this for a long time. Um, it has been very, very good. Uh, big fan of it. So, also, they've added a bunch of LTX stuff and Godzilla stuff. So, um, so yeah, check it out. Watch my other videos on this stuff. Learn all about it. Use it. Uh, go fast. Have fun. See ya.